want to talk about uh, the next level faith for next level fight. And our spiritual practices really matter. Uh, I've said this, you know, over the years working with the school, with the school staff. I used to say it in a more harsh way. Uh, I've learned over the course of time, years, help soften us just a little bit. Um, but it's a reality. Our spiritual practices really matter. If we don't live our lives in a way that God rains down on us, you see what I did there? Hope everybody can hear me okay with the rain picking up substantially. Um, but our spiritual practices just matter more than we realize. Jesus said to the disciples, some come, some come only by prayer and fasting. There was this moment where um, the disciples brought somebody who was spiritually tormented into the presence of Christ. And Jesus is looking at them and he's saying, they're saying, you know, why can't we address the spiritual problem that is at hand? And he says, your spiritual practices matter. He said, some the, sometimes you can only address things spiritually when you have been fasting and praying, or some come out only by fasting and praying. But you notice he didn't go fast and pray to take care of the situation. He immediately took care of the situation. In other words, he was living in a moment of preparedness for that which was about to come. And I believe that's a really significant thing for us. We can actually live fasted and prayed up if we're paying attention to what our spiritual practices uh, really are. And if we aren't in a deep place of pursuing God on a deeper level, try to really understand uh, where I'm driving with this because it's so significant, I believe, with the season that we have now entered into and the season that we are going into. But if we are not in a place of pursuing God on a deeper level than the moment we're living in requires, then we won't be ready when the moment comes that requires more. If all we're doing is living with the strength that the moment requires, because sometimes that moment feels overwhelming and we can almost feel like if we can just make it through, if we can just get by. But you are not born to survive. You were born and created by God to more than conquer, not merely conquer, but to more than conquer. So really getting by is simply not enough because even if we're, con we're contending with the moment, we're not allowing God to prepare us for the moments that are ahead. And so it's just constant, you know, I really want to kind of light a fire under all of us. Um, there are times, even this morning, just, uh, you know, it was interesting. I, as I was thinking about what I was uh, going to talk about in our morning prayer time uh, here in the room, I was just walking, praying, and I went back to my office, and I thought, you know, I'll eat something uh, just so I have something on my stomach. And, um, and then even in that, I just thought, okay, pay attention, because there's sometimes you, you think you want a meal, but there's something spiritual that God wants to transact. And so I just chose not to have that just so that I could focus in a little bit more, just go a little bit deeper. And, you know, fasting and praying, I think, is an important practice in our lives. And, and Wednesday, you know, Wednesday morning, Wednesday breakfast, lunch is my uh, routine. Typically, Wednesday evening, I'll have a meal unless I'm really focusing in on something. But, but that's my weekly routine. And I don't just fast and miss food. I'm, I'm fasting on purpose. I'm trying to really accomplish something specifically that I'm sensing from the Lord. But really, this becomes a lifestyle, just paying attention. Should I eat that donut, you know, is more than just a dietary decision that we make. I mean, we need to be thinking in these terms beyond because God's trying to draw us there on purpose. We have to understand there, there are weapons that will be formed against us, and there will be battles that we will need to fight. And God is constantly trying to prepare us to possess the strength we need for the battles that are ahead if we'll pay attention uh, in advance, then he equips us. Scripture says in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. And it goes on and says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication from me declares the Lord. As we're serving the purposes of God, this actually becomes the inheritance that belongs to us that there is no weapon formed against us that will prosper, but there will be weapons formed against us. But there is no weapon formed against us that will prosper, but there will be weapons formed against us. There will be battles that we have to fight. Don't be surprised when things don't always go your way and suddenly you're required to dig in a little deeper and to be a little more focused really in walking this out. A lot of people understand what it is to have a faith, 
Not a lot of people understand what it is to truly live by faith, where God's constantly strengthening our faith, challenging us to grow deeper in that pursuit. The Bible describes, and I just want us to see this because uh, it's important in the season that we live in in the church, there, are intense, there, there is an intensification of perilous times, perilous people, and increased warfare that the Bible says is going to come. There is an intensification, this progressive intensification of perilous times, perilous people, and increased warfare. And it's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. It says, mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You know, those characteristics mark humanity throughout all history. So why does Paul make it a point to say, mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days? And he's speaking of the progressive intensification of perilous times, perilous people, and spiritual warfare. And so we need to understand previous level faith in a next level fight, previous level faith in a next level fight can leave you feeling spiritually paralyzed and overwhelmed. This is vitally important that we understand in preparation for what God's desiring for us to accomplish. I, I'm ready for God just to do whatever God wants to do. Would everybody agree with that? But the scripture actually says that God did not give certain land to the Israelites in the Old Testament because they were not yet ready to possess the land. The beasts, the wild beasts, the animals would have multiplied so much had they killed all the giants in the land that the wild animals would have actually destroyed their children. You have no idea what you're asking for sometimes. They were not yet ready for what God was intending for them to possess because the giants that were in the land that they saw as enemies were actually going to be used by God to destroy the beasts that would not kill their children because the timing of the Lord is, per, is perfection. But that means in preparation for where we're going, we must stand where we are before the Lord and ask him to give us wisdom and guidance. And I just want to say it again, previous level faith in a next level fight can leave you spirit, feeling spiritually paralyzed and overwhelmed. Second Peter uh, chapter 1 talks about this idea of faith and it says, make every effort to add to your faith. I don't know if you've noticed what those characteristics are to be added to our faith, but it's not just having faith, but it's making every effort to add to our faith. There's something more that we're constantly supplementing and we're constantly fortifying and enriching our faith. Make every effort to add to your faith by adding uh, to your faith goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance. Come on, we need some perseverance sometimes in challenging times. Uh, I'm speaking to you very much in the moment of intense warfare. And uh, as we conclude today, I want us to really pray into this very specifically and very strategically. But that says in Second Peter, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't want to become ineffective and unproductive in my knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ because I'm simply living trying to survive a moment when he's trying to prepare me for something more that actually lies ahead. And can't entrust to me what he's desiring for me to possess because it would overwhelm and spiritually paralyze me simply because I'm not paying attention to what he's trying to do and equipping me and preparing. Oh, what, I'm, what I'm saying, simply put, previous level faith for a next level fight will stress you out and God does not want you to live stressed out. God wants you to live in a state of peace, in a state of strength, in a state of utter total dependence upon him as you're walking this out. Storms ahead are going to be strong. Do you know that? The Lord's amening or he's giving some special effects with the lightning and thunder. That's great. Storms ahead are going to be strong. And, and we, need to, we need to recognize that. Let's not be surprised when we find ourselves sailing right into a storm. You can be right in the middle of God's will just as the disciples were and suddenly a storm come up and you think, then they said to Jesus, "What? wake up Jesus, we're going to die. They were doing exactly what he had told them to do and they had come to a point of being overwhelmed to the place that they actually feared for their life. So don't be surprised when you face a storm. There are going to be storms that will come but God's promise is a strength within you that's greater than any storm that will ever surround you. 
God's promise is his strength will actually be uh, activated within you in a way that will be stronger than any storm that could ever surround your life. And God's giving direction that will seem militant at times. And do you know why? Because God's direction is militant at times. And I think it's significant in 2 uh, Timothy 3 where we're reading about you know, the progressive intensification that will come uh, as we pursue the Lord and as times grow near to the second coming of Christ. And uh, if you look at this contextually, it's really unique, but before it talks about the progressive intensification of times, it gives an analogy uh, of men and women of faith in the previous chapter. And there are three things, three analogies. There are soldiers, athletes, and farmers in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Soldiers, athletes, and farmers. All three are very intentional about what is coming ahead and what will be required of them in what is coming ahead. Soldiers, athletes, and farmers. They all require sacrifice. They all require intentional preparation in order to discover true advancement into the next level of whatever it is they're trying to accomplish, whether it's agriculturally, athletically, or militarily. There has to be preparation for the season that's ahead. So storms are inevitable, courage is optional, but strength is a choice that we make in advance. And I believe uh, the Lord is really wanting to challenge us just to sense and discern, not, not to live, not to incite some fearful reaction that let's really go for it, you know, for fear that we might not survive a, an attack. It's not like that at all, but it's just an awareness of what God is desiring, to walk in this place of constant peace. Somehow Jesus did this. <laughs> you know, no matter what came his way, whether it was a crowd of people saying that they wanted to kill him or a storm where the disciples decided they were going to die and he's completely asleep in the boat, he gets up and calms the storm. You know, he just lived in this constant awareness of God's disposition in every situation. So I want to just challenge you to make sure that you are in the Word consistently. Make sure that you are praying consistently. You know, there are prayer strategies over the course of time that have been different seasons produce different strategies, and we need to be discerning to what that is in our lives personally. Jesus is constantly introducing us to all we need in Him for what's to come, no matter what that may be. So really, to effectively move into next-level warfare, we have to move forward with a next-level awareness of God and what He's desiring to do to prepare us for where He's desiring to take us. Um, this is really about learning that spiritual response beyond simply a human reaction. And if you just think about it, a human opinion that might seem compassionate can sometimes be demonic. Jesus says, I'm about to be crucified. Peter says, no way. Never are we going to allow that to happen to you. And what does Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. A human opinion that can seem to be so alluring and so accommodating and so kind and so considerate can actually be a demonic distraction, distraction by the enemy. It's so important that we are discerning what God is desiring uh, to do in moments and time and not just be given to the idea of the path of least resistance surely is God's plan for my life. Sometimes you come face to face with the biggest giant of your life and you knock that giant down as a source of preparing you for greater strength for the greater giants that lie ahead. And not just you, but for the people around you that actually then won't have that giant before them. You're making a way, and then we begin to gather into another level of what God's calling us to. And that's where we start to really just draw from him and overflow into every situation that we face. I love this, uh, Romans 15, 13. It says, may, God, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you may overflow. Not that you would have enough hope for your situation in this moment, but you would have more than enough hope. Not that you would have enough strength in your situation for this moment, but you would have more than enough strength. Not that you would have enough faith for the situation you're facing in this moment, but an overflowing faith for moments ahead as well. Overflowing with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that discouragement is when you suffer a sense of loss of hope. And there are stronger storms ahead that will continue to intensify, I'm convinced. But where sin abounds, grace abounds, how? Much more. 
where problems abound, the power of God abounds much more. He is always releasing something of greater strength, no matter what that situation may be. God's presence and God's power will always be greater than our problems. But our spiritual practices really matter. Right now, um, Mrs. Howard is going in for a deposition. We're in the middle of... Um, a pretty intense battle that's preparation for a jury trial and um, you know a suit that's been filed against our school and we're looking at that situation and we're just saying all right Lord you know how do we respond to all of this um, and so she spent yesterday with our attorney all day preparing for today and uh, you know the journey ahead looks like it'll be this can take a long time draw things out. And if we're not careful, things like that can really ebb away and kind of erode a sense of the strength that exists within us. But I just want to ask, let's all just stand to our feet. And I believe um, right now, just even in what I'm talking about, God is filling Diana Howard with great strength, filling her with great peace, filling her with an overflowing of wisdom and revelation. God didn't bring us this far to let us down. He didn't bring us this far to let us drown. We're going over. We're not going under. We're going through. We're not held back. We're not um, limited or confined. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I mean, just the essence of strength and the essence of hope, the essence of the very nature of God being activated and awakened in us causes us to move more than mere survival, just beyond a place of mere survival into a place of greater strength. I just believe the Lord wants to deposit something of substance within us, that substance that was in John G. Lake's hands, that they put diseased foam in his hands and, and the disease under the microscope was healed, uh, was destroyed, and literally healing came through his hands in a way that it broke down all sickness and disease. That, that substance that was in Smith Wigglesworth that literally prayed over people who were dead and they came back to life. That substance that we see throughout the ages, that anointing of the, of the ancient uh, one that, that constantly brings a greater strength into the circumstances at hand than, than the, the battle that is before us. And we just receive that right now, Lord. We receive that you're filling us full to overflowing. There is an overflowing of hope. There is a strength, Lord, that is greater than every struggle. May we rehearse the strength of God rather than rehearse the struggle that we face. May we keep our focus exactly where our focus needs to be. If we're going to lead the charge, we must be in touch with the strength of God. And so today, Lord, we just tap into that as a source in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our emotions, but most importantly, in our spirits. That we would be spiritually strong in the midst of every battle. And we give you thanks, Lord, for breakthrough. We give you thanks for advancement. We give you thanks that hurdles that may come our way, we are fully capable in the strength of God to break beyond anything that would ever try to confine and hold back your kingdom. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So we rise up in the strength, Lord, that you've called us to rise up in, that we might help others rise up in the strength that you've called them to rise up in. Let there be just a sense, Lord, in our spiritual practices, in our places of daily routine, there would be a sense of great, fresh perspectives or that you're downloading within us, that you're pouring into us. We just receive that now in the name of Jesus. Take heart. Be courageous. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We just take up the full armor of God today. We stand clothed in Christ. You are our truth as we take the belt of truth in the center of our being. You are our righteousness, Lord. Thank you that you are our peace. You are the word 
that is our sword. You are our salvation. I thank you, Lord, that you strengthen us as we stand with a shield of faith connected, those shields connected with each other's shields forming this incredible wall that terrorizes the enemy. Help us, Lord, to be on the offense pursuing and exploring what you're desiring for us to pursue and explore. Help us to understand, rather than waiting for a move of God, you've actually called us to be the move of God. That our song and our worship as a church family is releasing something powerful in this community and the communities of the world. That our times of prayer and our times of fasting and our times of private personal worship is releasing something significant over the atmosphere of our hearts and over the atmosphere of our homes. We just pray, Lord, for those divine appointments, divine connections, divine alignments to take place so that the kingdom of God would advance. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said, my peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. I've been reflecting on this since I said it Sunday. But God doesn't just bring living waters to us. He causes living waters to spring up from us, becoming a fountain for the world around us. He doesn't just give us enough peace for our circumstances, which is what we settled for. But he causes peace to spring up from us that would impact the world around us. That's why Jesus could stand in the midst of the storm and not merely have enough peace for him to make it through the storm, but he would have enough peace coming out of him to calm the storm and everybody around him experience the calming of the storm as a result. And so I pray that we would be in touch with that as leaders, that God is not calling us to simply possess enough of that which God provides for us to make it through, but we're actually supposed to be taking people with us on this journey and there is more than enough of all that you need that exists deep within your life. But our spiritual practices are what activates and awakens that in every one of our lives. So I appreciate that you stand in the gap. I appreciate that you as leaders uh, are willing to fight battles that nobody even knows about. Um, there are pressures that come and warfare that exists that other people enjoy the benefit of our breaking through in those things. And I just appreciate that you've been willing to step into those roles of front lines, our community group leaders that will be seeing this, uh, covering those families in prayer that we're ministering to and loving on and encouraging. And may the Lord just grant us great strength and great grace as we advance forward. The battle may intensify, but the strength of God will always be greater than any circumstance we ever face. Amen and amen and amen.